What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you are all doing well in real life, most importantly, but I also hope everything in Raid is going well for you also. I hope that if you pulled during this 2x Ancient event, which I imagine you have, right? Hopefully you've had a lot of shards saved up. Hopefully you got some really good champions. Let me know. Did you get something good for one? And for two, did you pull Lysandra? I've seen one person so far pull her that was quit from the Discord, from a clan. Congrats. Lysandra is so extremely good. If you are having a hard time getting Arbiter and you think you can't compete in the arena because you don't have Arbiter, getting Lysandra will basically take that whole issue away, right? I mean, you're still going to have to be fast and everything like that, but she brings a 24% speed aura in all battles, which is huge. I use her on main account in Fire Knight. I use her on Dark Fae. She's an amazing, amazing champion. I think I even use her on Scarab King with uh, Blood Shield accessories. Her A3 ability is probably the best, if not the best, turn meter controlling ability in the game because she gives you increased speed. She increases your turn meter by 30% and she decreases the enemy's turn meter by 30%. So if you're having an issue speed tuning your team and you don't have a champion like Shiromani, like Kaimar, a champion who can sleep, freeze, stun the enemy to allow your team to be speed tuned in the arena, this makes it so extremely easy to speed tune your team because you're doing so much turn meter manipulation in general. Her A2 ability is extremely good as well. Fully depletes the tar target's turn meter. It's not 100% depletion, it's a fully depletes. So if you guys don't know, some turn meters, you can actually roll over 100% a little bit. So this fully depletes, takes it all the way down to zero. So an amazing ability there. And her A1, to be honest, doesn't get that much love because the rest of her kit is so extremely good. But this transfers all debuffs from this champion to the target. That's amazing. Transfers all debuffs. So like on Agrith, I think I've used her before to take those poisons and put them back, I believe. I forget where, but there were some situations where... I, d I didn't remember that Lysandra had that ability, but then all of a sudden it kicked in and it actually happened. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's amazing. And you're probably going to build Lysandra with high accuracy and high speed. That's how I've built mine. And the chances of reflecting those or transferring those buffs back to the enemy will be even higher, right? Because you do need accuracy to actually transfer them and them to actually land. I believe she will strip them from herself either way, though. Now, obviously, if she's frozen, she's not going to use her A1 ability, but great ability nonetheless. But today, inside the free-to-play account, we have 14 shards to pull. I'm going to pull these four shards, and I want to mention something. The current mission situation feels like a never-ending topic because we're stuck in gold. We're stuck in um, silver four, actually. I wish I was stuck in gold because then I could actually be progressing the account better. But Plarium, you got to fix the arena matchmaking because right now on this account, I'm in a spot with 2,000 gems. I've saved my gems. I don't really spend my gems on much. I haven't unlocked the sparring pit slots because... I don't think I can upgrade them enough. Frozen Banshee, absolutely amazing, but I already got a copy of her. I don't think I can upgrade those spots enough to actually make it make sense. Before we do the temple, I want to go ahead and go over this real quick, um, but I haven't upgraded any of these slots yet. I do try to keep a champion loaded up, but I just don't think I'm on and able to constantly refresh this for, make, for it to make sense. But even more importantly than that, I would be willing to do this if I knew, hey, when I spend my gems, I'm going to be able to get them back. But right now, I'm hard stuck on this mission. Reach gold two in Classic Arena. I can get to gold one. I'll probably get to gold one very soon. Now that I have sheer money in my team, I'll go ahead and show you guys this in just a minute. Let's go ahead and pull those 10 shards. But I have no source of gems other than the gem mine. If I would have not bought the gem mine originally and just, um, I don't know, bought shards, bought energy, I would be screwed. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Hawkorn Smash Lord. Sweet. We got a legendary on the free to play already. What in the world? Okay, so... This account is popping off with the luck. Hawkorn is actually a really good champion for this account because this A1, 40% chance of placing stun. I'm probably not going to book him. I don't know how much how worth it he is for the books, but this dude's actually pretty good and I do like him. Um, the A2 removes all debuffs from all allies, then places a black debuffs buff on all allies for two turns. This is the ascended version. We ascend all of our legendaries because if we're going to use them, you're going to ascend them, right? Um, he'll, heals all allies by 15% of this champion's HP, which he's got really good base HP when he's fully maxed out, fully ascended. I'll show you guys that in just a second. Um, heals each ally by an extra 10% of this champion's max HP for each debuff removed from them. The A3 is kind of weird because he kills himself. I don't like this very much, but it does hit pretty hard, I do believe. Sacrifices HP equal to 25% of this champion's max HP, then attacks all enemies. Damage inflicted is equal to 50% of this champion's max HP. This attack is always a normal hit. The HP sacrifice will happen even if it kills this champion. And it is absolutely hilarious in the arena whenever he does this and he kills himself. And especially when he's the last person left. I love it. It makes me it makes me feel so good when he's on the enemy side. On my side, not so much. But this is actually a really good aura to have in dungeons. 33% HP in dungeons. 
great. I can use it in dragons. I can use it in a lot of different areas. This A2 ability on a four turn cooldown, the strip, I've used Hawkorn a decent amount in the arena as a cleanser. I don't think I have any cleansers that cleanse all debuffs right now. So Hawkorn could very, very well become a um, Hegemon counter for me because I don't have any champion to really have a good answer against Hegemon. Doom Priest can kind of, but she only cleanses one debuff. Um, Steel Skull only removes one. So I don't have any champions that I know of who cleanses everything. Well, Spirit Host. Spirit Host could technically kind of do it, um, but Hawkorn brings the benefit of being able to, I could put him in a shield set. He could be really good in a shield set. The issue would be if I put him in a shield set, I would need to make sure he has immunity some way because Hegemon is going to lock out all the abilities. So if I put him in a shield set, he would need high resistance as well, which may be difficult to do. So I have to figure out how, how exactly I want to build him. But for Skinwalker's Faction War, which is probably one of the most difficult Faction Wars, he's going to help out immensely. Him plus Steel Skull, I'm working toward a pretty good Faction War team. Not going to lie, I would have much rather Lysandra, a million times rather Lysandra pop out as a legendary champion. But on the flip side, I've only pulled like 50 Ancient Shards on this free-to-play account. So my odds are like insane. So I got Shiramani from a Sacred Shard. I got Yakarl, a Void Legendary, from like three or four Void Shards. And now I have Hawkorn Smash Sword, which I'll be leveling up during the upcoming Champion Training event. Um, he's definitely not a top-tier Legendary Champion, but I don't think he gets as much love and as much appreciation as he, as he deserves. Great heal on the A2. I'll probably build him fast. He definitely is uh, justified being in a shield set. Let me show you guys how much HP he has base. So 23,000 base HP. That's a really good base HP amount. Uh, compared to somebody like Arsuga, who's also a pretty good shield set champion, if you just really need somebody with high base HP, 23,000 as well. Um, who's another good base HP champion? Um, Harvest Jack is another good one. Um, obviously, we got Mountain King with the most base HP. I think Harvest Jack's like 26,000. Yeah, 26,000. So 23,000, that's a pretty good amount. Pretty tanky champion. Maybe I just bring him in with immunity gear uh, to go against those Hegemon teams. Wait, what am I thinking? This is a free-to-play account. <laughs> I don't got no immunity gear. I barely even have any shield gear. I'm thinking about all these builds that I could do, and I have one shield weapon. So Fire Knight is where I'm going to get all this stuff. So as far as a progressional champion, I'm not for sure how much I'll use Hawkorn with my current lineup as far as like in dungeon progression, but in the arena, he does have a viable, solid use. Um, so I'll probably invest in him a little bit. I'll get him to level 50, take him to six star, may or may not, not 100% sure. Uh, but let me see immunity gear. Do I have any? So I have two pieces, neither one of them is going to be used. So I can farm the Doom Tower, get some better pieces from there. Uh, some untouchable could work for him. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll test him out. I'll build him, um, try him out in some different areas. But he's probably going to be on the back burner as far as he's going to be after your Carl. I'm not going to bring him up just yet. I will invest in him for the Skinwalkers for sure. But on my main account, He's level 60, fully ascended, fully maxed, and I've used him a good amount in the arena until I had a better cleanser. So keep him on, put him in a shield set, put him in immunity. I think he works pretty good in both of those. And overall, it's a decent legendary pool, right? Not top tier, not top of the line, but hey, I think, like I said, I think he does, does, does deserve a little bit more than what he's given credit for a lot of times. Now, looking at my free-to-play account, we're going to take a look at a few more areas before we go ahead and jump out of here. But I'm actually just surprised we got a legendary, to be honest. I was kind of thinking about buying those extra... Uh, shards from the market but back to the thing with whole i have no way to increase my gems because uh i have no i have no way to get out of gold no way to get into gold let alone get into gold two gold one is like a, a hard block but this new team i have set up we have a fast hike of tune uh 264 well fast for where i'm at right now in the game and then a pretty fast shiramani 225 with 228 accuracy so i got her fully taken up she's good in the arena now if we're faster, we should be pretty good because basically those two champions go first and then have my nukes lined up after that. So if the enemy's not speed tuned or if we're faster, they're usually in a bit pretty bad spot. Um, it'd be amazing if I had a strip champion like um, Madam Saris, Sathalia, uh, Ryan the Conjurer, Rian the Conjurer. I'm working on getting my Archmage, so I should have him eventually. Teams like this, obnoxious. Not even going to touch that. Your Carl's buff coming up, it's going to make Shiermani amazing. Having Shiermani in there with Yukarl, oh, it's going to be so good. I'm looking forward to that for sure. This team, I think we're faster than. I think we could beat. Even though they're pretty stacked with legendaries, this is a team that you might be hesitant to go against. But assuming that the Kaimar wasn't fast with high accuracy, we're going to be perfectly fine. Now, I got to turn this off. Um, Ugo is very, very annoying because what Ugo does is if everybody else dies and she's still alive, she'll res them. 
So I got to make sure Elhane uses her A2 on Ugo specifically to hopefully kill her because her A3 ability, I think, would kill everybody else. She hits pretty hard, and I have her set up to use her A3 ability because I think that's just the best ability for her to use because it hits the hardest, does the most damage to everybody, uh, but some situations I got to turn it off and use it on manual. So guys, let me know. Did you have as crazy of luck as I did? And also, one thing I wanted to mention is over on Twitch, I was going to do a Wailing for Free-to-Play account giveaway again. Now, when that, that giveaway, basically, I don't know the exact requirements I'm going to do yet, but I do believe it's going to be basically level 60 or lower account with no money spent, or at least a mini mix pack currently of $3. So if you spent money before, not a big deal, as long as your mini mix pack is currently $3. Basically, your account's not going to be super far, and anything we get in there can make pretty big progress. Because if I go in and spend money on an account, and it's an already whaled on account, it's not going to make much of a difference, right? I want to make a big difference in somebody's account who maybe doesn't have the financial position or whatever it may be to make a big difference in buying shards or whatever, right? And especially with the uh, the two X, well not the two X ancients going on right now, which is the best time to improve an account like this, and the champion training coming up which is also the best time to have a big stockpile of champions because now you can level them all up, get a better spot in the special champion training tournament. I think it's a great time to do a giveaway like this. So today we have pretty bad offers, but tomorrow, and I want to do it with Lysandra, so I'm going to hopefully see the offers tomorrow, which is going to be Saturday. So Saturday, I plan to have a stream. Go ahead and join Discord down below and follow me on Twitch, and you can see when I go live. But I plan to do it then. So if you guys want to stop by, if you think you meet those requirements and you want a chance to win that, definitely stop by the Twitch side and uh, jump in. I'm not going to do too many announcements before it happens because I want people who watch the videos, support the channel, stay stay to the end to have the best chance of winning. So I uh, may do a, uh, an announcement in Discord, I'm not 100% sure, but it won't be in the Twitch title or anything like that. Uh, so with that said, I plan to do that tomorrow. I'm not for sure the exact amount, but these deals today in the shop, they're just not that good. So I want whoever wins it to get good bang for the giveaway bucks you know, and this is a good deal. This is a good deal right here. This event advantage is okay. Um, there was another thing that was decent, actually. Well, I guess it's gone now, but this energy would be good for the upcoming event. Um, but this ancient shard, 15 bucks for eight. Nah, just not good. Um, I know which pack I want to see, and it's not here yet. And this is also just kind of kind of poor offer in general. Four ancient shards for nine bucks, two empty gems. There's much better options out there. So guys, with that said, I hope you guys all had great luck in your shard pulls today. I'm definitely mind blown that I got that luck on this account. Actually, I'm curious since we're make this video a tiny bit longer. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm curious if my luck on my main account would be anywhere near the same. So we have six ancient shards over here. Let me go ahead and uh, throw some champions in the vault. I'm trying to save up as much as I can for the upcoming event. You guys know the uh, champion training event. So I want to make sure everything I have is three stars, four stars and stuff ready to be leveled up. Um, which is going to make a huge drop in my overall player power. We have seven shards here. Maybe we can get crazy lucky and get a Lysandra. Would be a dupe for me on main account, uh, which would be incredible because I'm actually, I think, two dupes away from getting plus 10 speed on my Arbiter. My Arbiter is not that fast, like 365, which seems weird coming from an account with a 265 speed Hikatoon. But hey, that is what it is. 360, I don't really use my speed Arbiter that much anyways. Uh, but if I got a Lysandra... Boost my Arbiter like 375, maybe got her to 380 soon. She would actually start climbing up there with the faster champions. Not necessarily that fast. I would need a plus 4 Arbiter plus a plus 10 speed to actually make her any respectable speed. I feel like last shard, can we get something good? Um, but yeah, I'm just really surprised about the Hawkhorn pool. So, interesting champion. I'll show you guys my current build of your, uh, Hawkhorn on this account real quick. Um, where is Hawkhorn Smash? Let's go... He should be in the vault, actually, I do believe. So we have a few spots there. Hawkorn, Hawkorn, here we go. So he, he was in a shield set. He's a retired shield set. Um, but yeah, I use, actually have a video on the channel using him. Uh, the cleanse, the heal, it all works very good. You do have to have specific teams built around him, but I did have mine built, did have a mastery. I think I had him booked. No, I, don't, I didn't actually. So I got lucky and had this uh, booked down once. So this ability does a decent amount of damage. The uh, the issue is, is that uh, it takes 25% of his HP. So it has... Pros and cons, right? Sometimes being the con of killing yourself, which I would say is a pretty significant con. Uh, but there we go. He has extra resist. Uh, he was stacking some resistance on his build, 319, because I didn't want my debuffs to be applied from the hedgy. So either way, guys, thank you all very much for watching the video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope you had great pulls yourself, and I'll catch you all in the next one.